In this video, I'm challenging myself to take our beginner's weaving kit and create a whole new project using it. So let's get started. So what you're seeing here is everything that's included in our beginner's weaving kit. I will put links for everything in the description box below. And by the way, our kit comes with this really handy little card with a QR code that goes to our beginner's weaving workshop. So if you wanna make this project, um, it's totally free on YouTube and I'll put links in the description for that as well. A few other things that I'm gonna grab as far as tools goes is just a pair of scissors, painter's tape, and some cardstock for the bottom of my loom. So let's jump right into this. I think I wanna use some diamond twill in this pattern. So I pulled out our diamond twill PDF, which you can get totally for free. Link in the description, you know the drill. I need 27 warp strings on my loom. So that means we're gonna need 13 groupings of our fringe. I like to do three strands of the fringe for each grouping, but I'm kind of thinking I might wanna try two. I wonder what that would look like. We're gonna try it. Let's just do it. Then we use even less yarn and we'll have more left over for other projects later. So that means I'm going to need 26 strands total. And I'm hoping this will create a thick enough fringe, but we'll give it a try. And then I'm just gonna grab the top layer carefully because I only want to cut through that. Call that good. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to warp my loom and I'm going to use the little warp string. This is our 412 linen warp string and I need 27 warp strings on my loom. First tying an overhand knot and then I'm starting on the fifth notch in. It's like the Goldilocks thing. We don't want it too tight. We don't want it too loose. And it kind of just comes with time. You'll get a feel for this. Things like a lot of plain weave can make your warp tighter and tighter as you weave. So I'm gonna keep warping, just putting one string into each notch, going around the notch and coming back down. And right now I'm just kind of adjusting the tension a little bit. It was a little loose on this end, so I was just kind of pulling the tension over till we're in the middle. So we've got the warp on. Before I start actually weaving, I'm going to use some painter's tape and paint, paint down my loom. I'm not gonna paint the loom. I'm going to tape the loom down so that it doesn't shift on me. So whenever you're weaving on the flat, this is like seriously such a great little thing to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm taking this piece of cardstock. Mine is like about three inches tall. This will give us a lot of room to tie the knots at the bottom. And it also is just something firm to beat down onto so you don't have to worry about your weaving getting crooked on the bottom. So I'm just gonna weave this in with plain weave and I'm going under one over one all the way across the loom and then just kind of pushing it down towards the bottom. Now we're ready to actually start building this little weaving. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, and we have a whole video on this, it's called How I Start Every Weaving. I'll put a link for it right here. And basically what it is, is it's this process of putting the cardstock in, a row of twining, and a few rows of plain weave. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so we're ready for the fringe now. And I'm going to attempt to just use two strands where I would normally use three because I'm just curious how it's gonna look. Is it gonna be okay? I'm using a simple Raya knot to do this and I'm gonna be working on two warp strings at a time. We're bringing one grouping from the right and going around the warp strings like this. Then on the left, same thing. So we're going around and in between those two warp strings. Then I'm just gonna like match up the ends and pull down tight. So let's try that again. Okay, here's where we need a duck. <laughs> One of my strands for my fringe has a knot in it. This is like totally common, but super annoying. So I'm just gonna cut a new piece of fringe here because I don't want a random knot in my fringe, you know? Since we have an odd amount of warp strings at one end, you'll notice we have three strings left instead of only two. So all I'm gonna do there is put my fringe around one string on one side and two on the other, no big deal. Now we need to decide what we're doing. And I kinda wanna do, like I said, some diamond twill where we could, maybe we weave just like one diamond, which if I can find another piece of paper. So if we just did one, diamond it would look like this instead of the two that's on here so i could do maybe a row of the diamond twill and then some wool in between and and see where that takes us 
Um, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. So one diamond is nine rows, so I'm just gonna count that out. And I'm always taking more than I need because I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I'll quickly take you through this diamond twill pattern, but if you need a more in-depth tutorial, I'll put a link for that right here. Since this is our beginner diamond twill pattern, I do have written instructions on it as well, but I'm just gonna quickly explain what this all means. Every colored block, so the light gray and the dark gray, represent our needle going over, or our weft going over one warp string. The white blocks represent going under one warp string. So to start our weaving off with a good base, I'm going to do two rows of plain weave before I start the diamond twill because I just wanna make sure that we've got a nice solid base for this since we just did the fringe and the, and the strings are kind of spread apart now. So I'm gonna just do one row of plain weave and then another one and then we can start the diamond twill. I've added a f what I call a floating warp and basically what this is is an additional warp string on each side so that our pattern doesn't get disrupted by those edge strings. But they, they act the same way as the pattern. So I'm gonna cover up all other rows and we're gonna weave a couple of rows together. So we're starting with three over and then under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three. Now that was just a very basic start to how this diamond twill pattern works. So if you need a full tutorial, I will link it right here. So I'm creating that arch, strumming my warp and then beating down that row. Now the trick with diamond twill is that you don't want to beat your rows down too tightly when you're using a yarn of this size because what's going to happen is you're going to basically make your diamond twill disappear if you beat down too hard. So I'm just beating it down very gently so that the pattern will actually show up. Okay, so I have one full diamond in. And now I think I'm gonna end it off with some more plain weave. So I'm just gonna do another two rows of plain weave. All right, so that looks great. So now I think we should pull out some of the wool and decide what we wanna do potentially with the wool out in the middle. And then maybe we'll do some more diamond twill at the top. So I have two colors of wool. I definitely love this like bluish gray color but the question is like do I want to do I don't know if I want to do sumac stitch I'm kind of wondering about doing maybe that little like that bubble effect that I like to do I think that might be kind of cool and maybe we'll do like a few rows of it like maybe we could do something like that like a little stripe effect in the middle Let's give it a try. The first thing that I'm gonna do though, especially since we're working on such a small weaving, what makes your wool go even further is you can actually, um, I'm just kind of like letting it unravel here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it in the center and this is gonna make our wool go twice as far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find a natural split point that's about half. And I'm not seeing one that's about half, so I might have to create one. Although right somewhere in here. So I'm just basically trying to, there we go. Split it in half so that I have two equal thicknesses when I'm done splitting it. So I'm just very gently kind of letting it fall apart. This is a very fine wool, so it does like to like It'll, it'll fall apart if you just kind of pull very gently. So I just kind of rolled this one up. I'm gonna set that one aside and I'm just gonna use this half for now. So I need to decide like how much of an area I'm gonna fill up with this. So for this, I'm gonna go over to under two, over to under two. So it's like a plain weave, but working with two warp strings at a time. And again, because we do have that odd amount of warp strings, over the last bit, we'll just go over three warp strings. I'm gonna pull it so we have a little bit of a tail, you know, about five inches long there. And then what I'm gonna do is like everywhere the wool is going over the warp strings, I'm gonna pull a little loop, just like this. I'm gonna try to make them somewhat even, but they definitely don't need to be exact. Okay, I think I like that, but I'm not gonna like pull off the tail quite yet. 
but I am going to take the the other color of wool and I'm gonna split that in half as well. So this one has a much more natural split point. I'm just kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, see that one wants to kind of come over here. So I'm gonna just gently pull this apart and see, watch, watch this. It'll just sort of fall. You definitely wanna treat wool, especially this fine of wool. This is a 19 micron merino wool. It's very, very soft and smooth. And so you wanna, you know, treat it with care and be gentle with it because it will start to felt otherwise. I'm gonna do another row of this, but this time I'm going to start under. So I'm going the opposite of what I did here. So under two over two. See, and then at the end I did, I did under two over one, which is, which is also fine. So I'm just gonna pull up these loops and I just wanna see what it looks like to have like multiple rows of these wool loops, you know, kind of nestled within each other. I've somehow never really done that before, but I kind of like it. Okay. In that case, I'm gonna leave another tail on this end and what you can do with your wool, let's zoom out a little bit. So what you can do with wool when you're trying to pull it apart, you don't wanna have your hands really close. Just put your hands a little further apart because the length of the staple or the length of the hairs is really long. So you put your hands kind of apart and then you just like gently, gently pull and it'll just sort of come apart. That's probably even longer, that is a longer tail than I need. So I'm gonna go a little shorter on this one. There we go. That's a little better. So I'm gonna do more of that same thing, I think, because we've got quite a bit of wool. Like I still have these whole other pieces that we haven't even touched yet. So I'm going to once again go over under with this next row of wool and pull up loops just like I did on the other two. So now again, I'm going opposite of the blue row. So I'm starting on the under over. Now I'm just trying to decide if I like it. <laughs> Let's put in the blue and see what it all looks like together. Okay, how do we feel about this? Is it too much? Ooh, it kind of looks like, the way that I've done this, it kind of looks like the beige is like little flowers. So I kind of like that. Maybe before I take off, like before I go taking this apart, I'm gonna weave more of the diamond twill so that we can kind of see what it looks like all together. So. I'm gonna just do exactly what I did at the bottom. I'm gonna start with two rows of plain weave and then weave in the diamond twill and just like see what it looks like because on one hand I'm feeling like there's too much wool in the middle but on the other hand I'm like maybe there's not. So I'm gonna do the diamond twill. Okay, so now I need to decide if I'm keeping all of this and I actually think it looks pretty good. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, but I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm kind of happy about this. I think I like it. Like it's simple, but I think with the repeating the diamond, both on the bottom and the top, it sort of brings the whole thing together. Cause at first when I just had the lower part, I was like, does this work together? I don't know. But I think now that I have it repeated, it like totally works. I just want to make sure everything's nice and secure at the top. So I'm going to do two rows of plain weave and just see what that looks like. I'm actually just now realizing this is a lot of string at the top. Maybe it'll be okay. So this this weaving is not turning out like as long as I thought it would be. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned because I do want to hang this directly from the loops. So is that gonna work? You know what, you guys? For your sake, let's let's try something. I'm, I'm a little nervous because if I take this off and can't get it back on, that's not good. But I kind of want to see what it's going to look like if I end the weaving here. So what I want to see is where our dowel will end up. So it'll end up like that. But if I do the little groupings, I think that will actually be okay. I think we're going to go with it. So now I have to see if I can get this back on. Um, thank goodness I can get the warp strings back on. But I just wanted to test that out because, you know, did we go high enough? 
But I think I am, I'm still gonna try doing at least two rows of plain weave and then the twining on top of that. So I did the twining at the top because this kind of like secures all the warp strings in place and spreads them out nicely and it's just a nice way to finish off the piece. I'm gonna cut off some of that excess. We're not done, we have some more steps to do. So we do have this little yarn needle that comes with the kit and that's gonna help us with the yarn tucking in the ends. So I'm gonna lift this up and we're just gonna flip it over bring all those tails to the back of the piece so that we don't miss any. And this part's gonna be a little interesting with how much wool we have in such a dense area, but I think we can do it. So let's start with the easy part. We're gonna take off the tape. And if you want to not squish your wool like I am currently doing, you can kind of prop up your loom in order to avoid that, but I'm not too worried about it. All right, so I'm taking the yarn tail I'm gonna thread it through this needle and I'm going to take it over to, actually I might take it all the way over here. So actually I'm gonna go through this loop here, then I'm gonna come down through this channel. See this little channel? We're just grabbing the loops on the back of the piece. We're gonna fish that tail through and cut off the excess. You don't have to cut it too, too short. And I'm gonna do the same thing with all the other ends as well. Okay, so now we're at the challenging part. We're gonna do the wool. And here's what we're gonna do. So since we went over to under two, we're just gonna take the end of the wool, I'm gonna kinda use your, just use your hands and just tuck that underneath like so. But we need to look at the front again when we're doing this. I'm gonna go to two in. So I've tucked that under two different spots. I wanna turn this over and I wanna kind of pull this loop out a little bit so that it sort of matches what's going on here. I think I'm happy with that. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim this off. I'm not trimming super close. I'm not gonna trim off any of the other wool. And so it just sits kind of straight like that. And that'll just stay tucked in. So now I can go to that same row and do the same thing on the other side. It's gonna be a little bit different for anywhere we didn't go over a warp string at the end. So on these ones, with the beige on this side, we ended on the under. So I need to make sure that that's gonna look okay. And I think it actually will, but let's give it a try. So I'm gonna go in right here and tuck this under and then go to the next one and tuck this under. And then once again, flip this over, give it a look. And I think that that's looking good to me there and then we can go ahead and trim off that excess. So you can just continue that process to tuck in all of these ends. So now we're ready to begin taking this off the loom. Then the other side will just kind of slip off. We're gonna get this on the dowel soon, but before we do that, we wanna finish off the bottom. To give it a little bit of extra stability, I'm going to tie overhand knots on the bottom here. So I'm just tying a little overhand knot with two strings at a time and I'm butting it up against the bottom of the weaving, but I'm not pulling super tight. And then on the very end, I'm gonna tie a group of three strings together. Now I'm gonna tuck in all of these ends into the bottom of the weaving so that there's like a really nice finish. So I'm just using that little metal needle again and I put it into a few rows of that, the twining and the plain weave that we had at the bottom. I thread that needle, pull that loop through, and then just cut off the excess, and then that's all hiding in there really neatly. Those are all tucked in, but now we need to get this onto the dowel, and then we're gonna sort out this craziness because it's a little, it's a little too much. So I'm gonna take this dowel, and we do once again have an odd amount of warp string, so I need to figure out how we're doing this. I think I'm gonna do one loop at a time. Let's see what that looks like. So to do this, again, we have a whole video on this, but I'll do it quickly for you here. You take the loop, my weaving is upside down. You open up that loop, flip it forward, and then take these two little ears, flip them forward again, and we're gonna slip, put them together and slip this over the dowel. The reason I like to do that extra twist is it kind of locks 
the warp strings on just a little bit better. So flipping it forward, taking these two loops, flipping them again, bringing them together, opening them up, putting them over the dowel, and just locking them up towards the top. So I'm gonna take my hanging string, which is just more of my warp string, and I like to sort of wrap around the dowel about three times, and then I just tie a knot, trim off the excess, then I figure out how long I want the hanging string. So I usually like to go about two thirds of the weaving, so I'm gonna go down to about there. Then I'm gonna wrap this around three times again and then tie this end in a knot as well. Let's talk about the fringe. I'm gonna grab a steamer and then you're gonna see the magic of the steamer, you guys. It is pretty great. This looks like a little guy, you know? Like kinda like the Pixar lamp guy okay are you ready for this are you are you ready can you believe that it goes so straight i feel like i'm doing an infomercial <laughs> and now it's so straight okay so once it's as straight as you want it to be you're gonna kind of just let it dry a little bit because it's gonna be a little bit wet at this point from the steam i don't recommend steaming your wool isn't that insane like it looks so nice and straight now and it was like so kinked up and that's that's all it takes is just a little bit of steaming. There's a couple different ways that I've cut my fringe before, but I've been using my table groove as my way to cut my fringe lately. So I'm using my weaving comb to just sort of gently comb out the fringe and make sure it's just kind of like neat and tidy and nothing is like curling up on us. Okay, let's give it a try. That's pretty cute if I could say so myself. Click this playlist here for videos on all the different techniques I used in this weaving.